the mouse is almost in the, like a rollerball. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome okay. to Drive Time with Haggerty. We're doing another podcast. We've been gone a few weeks. We had uh, some change up, some travel, and uh, we're doing it again. We got lazy. On the road. Well, I got don't it. say we. That's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> we know how you Portland people are. Yes. And Stefan, I'm Matt Lewis, by the way. Stefan is in the office. He's here in Traverse City. Home office, working on magazine things, because that's his main job. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. And then joining me today is Davin, our parts finder. and uh, I've been out finding parts, man. Yeah. My, my partner in crime for so many yes. automotive adventures, it would seem. Yes, yes. Um, to start off, I want to talk a little bit about a couple cars, and we got talking about this right before we started recording and had great conversations. <laughs> uh, it's, all, it's all downhill now. So, yeah. It's nothing good. Um so there, there's a couple of new, I, I'll say classic cars, a classic truck and a, and a classic Mustang that are basically being replicated. Um, the first one, the 56 Ford F100 or the X100, it's fully modernized, but it's $180,000. Yep. It's very attractive. <laughs> I'll give it that. And, yeah, and, and, and as we were talking about it, you know, this is where where I'll say modern drivetrain hits the classic look. Right. And, you know, similar to the Carl's Corvettes, it's the <laughs> same same general principle. Um, other than you're not taking a production chassis and sticking a modified body to look, you're actually taking an original style body and putting on a, more of a tubular uh, chassis. But, you know, like, like Steph and I were talking about, you know, that price tag is kind of hefty Mm-hmm. Um, 180,000 bucks. Yeah, and and this yeah. is kind of where the, you know, to politely put it, this is where the hobby and I guess we'll say companies kind of split. Yeah. Kind of well, split and go a little crazy. So the hobbyists can no longer, I'll say, no longer afford because not many people are going to drop 180,000 in a build. Right, that's like livable house area. Uh, for price. Uh, I'm living pretty nicely <laughs> in my house right. <laughs> and under right. this. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, but that's that's where that time and material starts to get a little crazy. But if you roll it and you think about it a little bit differently, at like we're talking about a brand new full size pickup truck or SUV, suburban Yukon mm-hmm. type of thing, you're pushing fifty to seventy thousand. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense that your toy is worth. More than that, yeah, a hundred thousand dollars more. <laughs> it, 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 and here's my argument: it's a it's a beautiful truck, but are the F100s that rare that people need to replicate it? And this is more no, so on the no, they Mustang. are that popular. Okay, they also they do have not, become uh, how many Mustangs are out there? Sixty five Mustangs, uh, slightly less than a bazillion, right? Right. But yeah, just you can buy brand new shells, yeah. Camaros. There's equal, not equally as many, but there's about half a bazillion. Right. And they're replicating that shell. Yeah. So obviously <clears throat> they're they're not necessarily uncommon, but they're so wildly popular that it makes business so, sense to re- does reproduce it, them. Does it does it matter then what shell is on the outside of this platform and drivetrain? Because it's there's there's nothing 1956 Ford F100 about that vehicle at all. The look, the look of it. But as soon as you start going I'll, down the specs, I'll, I, I guess I have to depart here slightly from our normal conversations, but with with automobiles. But what gets your attention walking down the street, just kind of anywhere, right? It's the shell of whatever might be walking or driving past you. Sight and sound. That's what right. I. That's it. So if you if if you if you're getting this vehicle to turn heads, mm-hmm. why not spend five or ten thousand dollars on a good original one? Original being like the original mm-hmm. kind of truck, not right. all completely original. Um, that's still going to turn the heads and get the look. And you're going to have the vintage driving experience. And then and then if you want if you want the the modern performance aspect of it. Get a Corvette, or a, I guess if, you, if you're if you're after the Ford look and you don't really want a Corvette, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I know what you mean, a GT. Yeah. But right. yeah, I, I understand what you mean. But why not put it all in one piece, one package? 
have one vehicle. How, how big is your garage in Portland? Not very big, I bet. <laughs> but, but you see what I mean? I mean, for somebody that has limited space, put it all in one package. You get the classic look, and then you have the modern performance. There's certainly some value to that. Again, we can argue probably all day long, and, and I'd love to, actually, <laughs> uh, relative to the 180000 but that's that's where time and materials, you know, materials is half of that. Yeah. Time is the most, the majority of it. So when you take it out of the hobbyist garage, put it into a shop, at somewhere between seventy-five to one hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour, you've got a lot of expense right there. Are you so? There are companies doing this. There's uh, Icon who's doing this stuff with, mm-hmm. with full Broncos and yeah. FJs. Are you? What's more appealing to you? Companies that are doing this, or individuals who decide to build one of these in their garage. That's I'd, I'd want to build it so it's yeah. mine and mine only. Right. That's me. Yeah, I'm I'm on the mentality as as Matt as well. I like to look at my my vehicles and say, you know what, every mistake that's there mm-hmm. is mine, and I didn't pay somebody else to do it. <laughs> but that's me. Right. Other people may not want to put t- forth their their spare time to do that. Um, that's where the passion and the and the passion has a different, a different split again, right? Right. Because you're looking at, you know, totally spending all your last breaths on the vehicle, or, yeah. or doing other stuff, and right. or and, having and a, writing a check. I mean, having, it doesn't diminish having your garage half full of half finished projects. Uh, mine are getting closer, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> mine's not going anywhere. Um, so just to go over the specs, 180,000 will get you fully independent, four-link front suspension, nine-inch rear end, uh, power rack and pinion steering, four 13-inch disc brakes with six piston calipers. That's in all the corners. So they're uh, big old brakes. Yep. And you have the option of a 5.0 Ford 412 horsepower engine or the supercharged 630 horsepower engine. So there's you a lot of call in bang at that point. There's a lot of buck too. <clears throat> the only thing I find that's uh, somewhat humorous in this, uh, in their suspension, hmm. and and this is not to take away the the wonderful design of the Ford nine inch, but after you do all the independent, all this, all the six uh, calipers, blah blah blah, right, and then you put a straight axle in the rear, it just kind of like, <laughs> it's still a truck though. <laughs> it's no, still a truck. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, no matter what it looks like. Uh, and then we've got that 65. This is the Revology 65, I'll say, Ford Mustang. It's a it's an early Mustang. Um, they're asking 120, which is a little closer, I think, maybe to reality. But their 5-liter Ford V8 is 265 horse, so not quite the same. It's not enough. And no. <laughs> well, it's lighter. It's way um, lighter. Um, but they did do yeah. a three-link rear-end suspension, so at least... So that's slightly better. Yeah. At least they're getting into your... <laughs> Happy about it. Well, I mean, if at a, at a hundred eighty thousand dollar price tag, I'm thinking, you know, independent rear. I guess that's you're, where I'm going. You're thinking <laughs> it old. Like it should be doable. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Almost supercar with a Ford body. Uh, yeah, body. yeah, right. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. right. Okay. So I mean, if Corvette could do it in the '60s. It seems like Ford could have done it. <laughs> says the Chevy guy. Um, <laughs> right. All right. So then uh, we came across this article actually last week. Uh, but we didn't make last week work. So, um, 10 best pickups you can buy for less than $10,000 on eBay. And these were actually on eBay at the, at the time that this was posted. And we'll link to the article yeah. there. It's probably all so sold they're by real, now. Right. real auctions, not make believes. Right. They weren't like, look at how low these retail are values are, right. or look at how low the price book says. This is actually right. stuff for sale. Cool. Um, Jalopnik, and, Jalopnik has been doing this. It's like a, almost like a series now. It's, yeah, you know the ten rarest cars you can get for under twenty thousand, and you know that sort of things. So I think every couple of weeks they're doing a new one. But it's. But I was surprised there were some really good options <coughs> mm-hmm. in that article there. Mm-hmm. Um, the Jeep J two hundred Gladiator that was uh, that was a phenomenal one. It, this particular one is not the nicest one in the world in the homemade camo. The camo polka dots are... Right. It's a hunting rig. A little... Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Um, but so I guess just some surprising ones <coughs> I saw in here. I didn't realize the uh, Ford Lightnings were that cheap. That is the one out of all these that I'll say surprised me the most as well. Yeah. But it is the later version opposed to the earlier. Right. Maybe only uh, that 90s. particular Lightning was that cheap. Well, maybe, but it, I mean, just judging on the pictures, it doesn't look terrible. It's not blistered. It's nope. not falling apart. No. Nope. So. Um, based just on to, the, based <laughs> on the 72 DPI photos that. Right. You found on eBay. Right. Don't be a snob. And, and I'm sorry, but as much as I like ice cream, I find this thing creepy. <laughs> yeah? Yes. You don't like the uh, the 60 F250 uh, ice cream truck? Yeah, something else about it is a little trailer. The fact that it was painted with a roller. Um, <laughs> roller, and I think the I think the body filler was, was spread with the same roller. <laughs> um, I think the body filler is ice cream. Uh, <laughs> now, that was a little... That's a little crazy. Yeah, that one's a little, but it's cool in its own sense that it's classic, and you know, you you could get some if you bought it and you did stuff with it. You could have something. Really it wouldn't cool. be my first choice. Um, no. uh, shackles and chains are what's coming out of that <laughs> that vehicle right there. I'm sorry. No love. <laughs> uh, the, the Land Rover. I was a little Land surprised Rover's to see. Cool. I mean, it is the truck variant, but right, which I don't. I guess I'm not sure why. That's such a detractor. I mean, it seems like if you were in love with the Land Rover, it wouldn't matter what it was. Probably the same reason that the Jeep trucks are way less expensive than the Jeep Wranglers. Oh, you know, the CJ the Wagoneers. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I mean, I, this to me falls in the same line as like a, a, a earlier hum or a later Humvee, right? I mean, the, those yeah. trucks versus the suburbanish, you know, the giant beasts. Yeah, right. I mean, I guess maybe they do the same thing. I mean, yeah, if you want, if 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 um, what you want is a classic Land Rover, um, and you don't necessarily need to have the short wheelbase right. and fully enclosed body, it, that'd be with a, that. a hell of a way to get into it, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, Subaru Brat, not surprised. I'm sorry, I hate these yes, things. Yes, I am surprised. What? I'm surprised they actually found a picture <laughs> to post that wasn't rotted to the windows. <laughs> the bottom of the window sills. Why do you hate them? I don't like them. They're Why? just look at this ugly. thing. <laughs> well, okay, I, uh, a few weeks ago, on, a few weeks ago on Facebook, I asked Subaru Brat, VW Caddy, or Dodge Rampage, who did the the compact pickup truck best in, in the eighties. Yeah, and I never commented because I was taught if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't like any of them. Huh? <laughs> no, I don't. It, but it, yeah, it's not my. At cup the of same thing. token, Subaru is the only Subaru is the only one that. Kind of came back out with it again, right? Yeah, with the Baja, yeah. which was just as bad. <laughs> it didn't rust. Right. Well, not yet. Uh, right. <laughs> but the, no, the, they're the way whole, better about it. And those, the I at Lemons last year, there was a guy who had one of these, a kid who had one of these with the with the two rear rear oh, facing man. seats. Yes, and they're um, they're grandfathered in, and so you still can ride in those mm -hmm. legally. See. Which is, I would find Third. this. I suppose I would <laughs> really? find this cool. I wonder if you can wear your helmet there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I suppose I would find this cool if it had those rear facing seats and it was like all Baja out. Lifted a little bit. Little right. Bit. Yeah. With the light, light bar, the light yeah. rack on it. You've got the lift. You've got the knobby or tires. I, I I could buy that. It would be cooler than this. Oh yeah. I don't. I I don't mind the brats. I, I like so in them. other words, a lot like this, but just completely change it. <laughs> right. See, I just was, make well, it a jeep. I, I'll tell you a little secret. <laughs> Everything is cooler as a race car. Well, that's without <laughs> that's, a doubt. I guess the yeah, I, the gist of it. For the longest time, I thought these that. were that these were German and they were called brats. <laughs> it's totally different. I didn't know that. Awesome. Yeah, the sour cart was extra. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this <clears throat> thing is a beast. The military. What is it? Six and a half. Yeah. Yep. Six by six. It's a 1990. It, that could easily be a 1960. <laughs> yeah. never, they never changed. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all it's all about function, right? Um, Aesthetics right, yeah. are not, you know. Yeah, I right. don't I mean I don't I don't necessarily know what you would do with that. I don't. Do you need a you need a special license to drive one of those no. things? Like, no, actually, no. The weight's not over. I don't believe so. You could haul your race cars with that. There you go. That's exactly. As a private individual, you would not need anything different than a dr regular driver's license. You couldn't haul them quickly. No, but or, you could haul like thirty of them. Or comfortably, right? right. <laughs> But you yes. can haul a lot of them at once. Yep. Yeah. I always thought like a the first H one Humvee with a with a mm -hmm. Duramax and a mm -hmm. modified in with a Duramax would be just a phenomenal hauler. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You talk about eye catch. You this would, would be that would guy do the same. at the race car. Yeah. Though. This would do <laughs> the, the same. Track. This would do the same thing. Yeah. All right, and then we've got a Toyota pickup '93. That is the Back to the Future. The Marty pickup. McFly edition. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool truck. It I is. Like those those things run forever. Well, and when they're when they're tastefully modified, I'll say mm-hmm. they can look really good. '76 um, Dodge Power Wagon. The Power Wagons are just cool because they bothered putting power right in the name. Right. <laughs> right I mean, out front. That's Dodge. <laughs> what and what's what's cool about these is you can find these pretty clean Mm -hmm. because municipalities had them for fire trucks Mm -hmm. rescue units so if you can you can find them when they're getting rid of them those are the ones the the well yeah because they they came fully loaded with yeah well every stored inside and they were meticulously maintained yes yeah uh because when you're not fighting fires you're cleaning trucks (laughs) exactly right (laughs) so yeah yeah, yep. you get like the, the the brush. I'll call it the brush edition or whatever. Oh, yeah, and, and, and then the Lincoln Blackwood. God, I hate those things. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, years and years ago, and I am sorry, but Dave Kinney told me that these things have potential because nobody bought them. Potential to be collectors because they were weird for Lincoln, and they didn't sell at all. Nope. Oh. They're weird for anything. I mean, <laughs> they are. anybody who... A any barn company, door yeah. tailgate. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Which was unique. It was unique. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was. I mean, that was the old... Was, this, the, was the Blackwood the beginning of the end of Lincoln as we know it? Lincoln's been reinvented, haven't they? Yeah. It, I, their new stuff I like a lot better than what they were doing, like, mid-90s to 2000s. I'll take a town car. But Link, Just a regular old but, town car. But Lincoln is... A, I think Lincoln's modified their thought process as opposed to just taking, in this case, the F-150 this was and using Jonathan Klinger's words, putting a push-up bra on it <laughs> and putting it out on the street. Yes. This is a sad, sad I mean, thing. Well, and this was... Similar to the Escalade This function, was supposed you know? to be every bit of luxury you could possibly have in a pickup, period. With lots of lines on the side. Well, yeah. Yeah, the lines make no sense That's whatsoever. elegant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in case you're wondering... Maybe they should have put different wheels on it. Then. Pinstripes gone bad. Because this picture actually yeah. looks almost looks like a a, a mid nineties S ten. The way it's the those, angle those up. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to see the pictures we're talking about, again, we'll link to it in the description there. Um, this is how I feel about this. One. <laughs> it's just rude, Stefan. I can't believe it. All right. Fair enough. Um, so, David, you were at Spring Carlisle. I was at Spring Carl, and I'm going to tell you what, it was rainy, cold, windy, cold, and windy. Sounds awesome. And rainy? And the same, and the, the sun did come out, um, but the place was packed. Was it? So from a diehard standpoint it was it was really nice to see that. That was that was good. So I've never been to Spring Carlisle. What what what's going on? Well, Spring Carlisle is the the, I'll say loosely, the first show of the year for swap meets, um, with exception of the Charlotte Auto Fair, which is two weeks ahead of time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but count. not the first. <laughs> so, um, but at any rate, so it, it, it is a, the fairgrounds in Carlisle is, is literally packed full of, of parts. And from a, it's not as, I'll say specific as like Hershey tends to be in the fall, where it's, it's 50s and later. This has a little more 70s to really 70s to 50s, but there's still, you know, like any swap meet, a ton of Model A parts. Right. <laughs> because there was a ton of Model A. <laughs> there was a ton of Model A's. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got parts. So, I mean, and it's, and it's a fairly varied show because you don't, American show. So you have, I mean, you're not going to go there looking for any MG parts. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, if you find MG parts at the swap meet, they will be ridiculously cheap. Yeah, if you can nobody finish. wants them <laughs> at that swap. Um, but there was some pretty slick stuff. Um, I mean, it, and they've done fairly good. Some of your swap meets turn into flat-out trinket shows, mm-hmm. and tool and trinket shows, so a flea, a, kind of today's flea market. Um, they were doing a pretty good job of trying to limit that. Um, there's keep it there's toy value, you know, there's toy stuff and, and that, but... Um, and I think that's maybe just to appease some of the masses. Well, it's tough when you get into a 
to a show like that into a swap meet and it's you get into the section that's just row after row of the exact same cheap tools yes that's just yep. garbage stuff you know yep. the stuff that as soon as you get the screw tight the handle breaks off the shaft yeah. of the screwdriver and you're sitting there holding three pieces of plastic <laughs> uh, correct and I have a, a couple screwdrivers like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've learned from experience. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, I can see why they'd want to limit that. I mean, one or two of those guys is probably fine. And, but and they do them, space them out. Yeah. I've noticed that. Good. They kind of strategically locate them. Um, yeah. And those tools do have their time and place. It's usually one time. <laughs> in, in one a, place. In a very dark, dreary place. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know. I can't find anything. <laughs> right. This <laughs> long dude. side of the road. Right. The cougars are coming. What am I going to do? <laughs> um, but, I mean, a couple things that I saw that were, were pretty slick. slick. There was, uh, I was trying to actually locate a couple dual quad setups. And um, those can be, you know, kind of tricky and really <laughs> expensive. Uh, what I find is, is amazing is when you get into... Uh, so, for instance, for a, uh, a Tri Five Chevy, you have the the dual quad setup, and they have what they referred to as a, what some people call it a uh, the bat wing uh, air cleaner. Okay, it's a great big triangle. You got the two spots for the carburetors, but then the actual air filters come off to the sides mm -hmm. and hang down. Um, so, as I'm looking for one of these, I did run across a gentleman and said, "I know one that was hand delivered here." For the minimal price of forty nine hundred dollars uh, for an air cleaner, yes, it's no engine attached. Uh, no, it's just like, wow. the air cleaner. It seems high. so. <laughs> and you get into that rarity thing, right? When you get a rarity of the full car, well, the pieces and parts can be pretty rare too. As long as somebody wants them, they're worth money. Right. right. It had to have been the best air cleaner. Uh, that cleanest is cleanest air. Right. <laughs> just so clean. You don't yeah. even need to put a filter in it. That <laughs> air cleaner is so clean. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, but the other slick part about that I find is always interesting with, with swap meets is the everything and anything type mm -hmm. of thing goes. So there was a jet ski airboat. Okay. So min think about a jet ski, a mm -hmm. typical sit down jet ski, but more of the first version, like right before they were stand up and you sat down and then add like a rubber raft around it and put a humongous fan behind you. Okay. <laughs> but it was it was production. It wasn't like a hack together thing. Who's so that was it? interesting. It, it wasn't made by like, Dave in and his I, garage. And I do have a picture of it if you'd like okay. to post it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <clears throat> and then, um, and kind of along the trinkety stuff, there was a barbecue grill that that I want to have. Okay. okay. This thing was, it's steel. It was a life, slightly smaller than life size, bull. A bull. A bull, okay. like a bull riding bull. Uh huh. Right down, it had a ring in its nose, and I I noticed the ring in its nose because that's where the smoke was coming from. <laughs> okay, so as you're barbecuing, right? I, and at first, I was like, "Well, that's pretty cool. It'd be sitting out in your yard and have this thing smoking, right?" And then I saw somebody walk up and opened up its side. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the ironic part, and was flipping hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, "How cool is that?" Yeah. Right? I mean, that's you you'd would be, be the only guy only in the guy block. In the block. Yep. That's right. Yeah. But where I live, it wouldn't you know it wouldn't work just because I'm out in the middle of I'll, I'll say the middle of nowhere. Nobody would see it, right. other than my friends when they came over. It's hard to you offend know. your neighbors if you don't have right. very close. Right. Yeah. I was yeah exactly. Like, I was like the um, the the little gizmos that people build just for getting around swap meets. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you know, the motorized bar stools or yep. um, a lot of creative wagons, too. Yes, I wagon. saw um, a couple... Speaking of the wagons, there was a couple low rider wagons with, with wide tires. Uh, they were, you know, like an inch or two off the ground. Uh -huh. And then the complete flip of that where it had... Um, Actually, they were off a junior dragster, but it had big slicks, taller <laughs> slicks on it. It had a lot of rake and wheelie bars. Nice. And it was like, yeah, nice. it was it was pretty That's pretty tremendous. Awesome. Yes. <clears throat> awesome. And well, then that, the modified trikes and all kinds of crazy. <clears throat> That's sweet. Well, that sounds like a great time. It's definitely an experience everyone should. As a car guy, I don't know how you yeah. never go to a swap meet, but it would be tough. you have to go at least one time just to, to see right. just kind of the spectacle. Do you go to, will you go to Fall Carlisle as well? Um, 
Usually don't. I usually end up going just because Fall Carlisle and and Hershey are back to back weekends. Now, from a travel standpoint, it would make a lot of sense to hit that one. It's thirty minutes from the next one, um, but it's also then, you know, two weeks out of the right. Yeah, out of the Away. shop. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Stefan. Yes. The Forty Eight Davis. We did a, a magazine article on this, and oddly enough, Jay Leno just did a ride along with the Peterson mm-hmm. uh, with a Davis. Yeah, the Davis divan. Uh, yeah, so our current current issue, the summer issue of Harry Classic Cars. Um, there you have it. Oh, it's fantastic. Drag cars it's fantastic too. issue. Sweet. Um, nice. uh, Jonathan Stein did a story on three wheelers because um, they're just sort of these oddball Absolutely. cars. Are they, are they cars? Are they motorcycles? <laughs> that depends on your state. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and uh, one of the cars he featured was the 1948 Davis Devan. Um, and the car we actually photographed is the is the car that is in the Peterson Museum. It's the car that Jay Leno drove okay. on his show. Um, it's in need of a restoration, although it looks very phenomenal. Um, Amazing. And just to, you know, there are, I think maybe they made seventeen of them. Oh jeez. Um, yeah. And it's uh it's very bathtubby looking, <laughs> um, and the three really the only. The only three wheeler that has ever really been successful is the Morgan. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the original. The original right. Morgan, and in the UK, the Reliant Robin. Yes. To yes. some extent, but that was totally different reason. Yes. And the Morgan's way cooler. And various rickshaws <laughs> in Thailand, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. But, um, so it was. It was. Um, I've never seen one of these in action, um, but it was very. I. I know that. Um, Wayne Carini owns, I think he owns a Davis. Does he? I think so. And he brought it, he actually brought it to um, a Haggerty driving event once oh, and let, let teenagers that's, that's learn awesome. to drive on it. Yeah. 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 You got to drive slowly in them. They um, do have the tendency to be a bit tipsy, don't they? Well, I think that's, I think that's a misconception. Uh, Jonathan interviewed Jeff Lane mm-hmm. um, of the Lane Motor Museum, mm-hmm. um, who I think has some experience with oddball little cars. And, he said that that these cars are harder to tip than you would think. Yeah, well, you get a fair amount of weight, bow. It just seems like breaking into a corner would be yeah, a terrible it's, it's idea. It's not the three wheelers that we grew up on in the, right. <laughs> in the late eighties. Right. Right. Where you go end over the, the handlebars. Let's, let's put a two fifty on it and make it really narrow. Um, but, and tall. but currently, the 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 Petersons trying something interesting because um, they want to get this car restored, and they're. They're doing a, sort of a crowdfunding project to raise funds to, to restore it, which I think is a, yeah. a neat idea. It's worth trying to. Right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Because I can't imagine it's going to be cheap to restore this thing. It's not like you can get time and materials. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't scrap one of the other 17 right. to make, get the right. parts you need. Right. That wouldn't be good. No, you're going to want to use what you have there. Well, or make what you don't, you know. Well, right. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's cool. Awesome. Well, we'll we'll link to that uh, video as well, so you can check that out. And it don't don't pass along my number, by the way, for them to call no. for <laughs> for parts. <laughs> for parts. No. Yeah, you're on your own. You're on your own, Peter. So. You guys are probably seventeen. Good. Just make it. Thanks. <clears throat> and then most recently, we uh, we did a video and article about a barn find that I know you you encountered these vehicles while you were out doing buyers guides in I did. Texas down in Austin. Yep. Um, Motostalgia. They're auctioning off basically five American cars, three Cadillacs, Milburn, REO, um, found in a barn in Texas, and uh, a lot of people are digging this. The 32 Cadillac V12, 33 V12, and, and the one of those is, is like a basically a first off production mm-hmm. car. Um, there's a 38 V16 Series 90 Cadillac, an all-electric 23 Milburn. I thought that was new technically. Electric cars, huh? I'll be jiggered. Right. <laughs> no, when, when actually, well, when Thomas Edison invented electricity, uh, no, wait, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can invent electricity, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> um, and then uh, Ario Model G Boat Tail Roadster, uh, and that one actually has two bodies on it, so you can have a sedan or a roadster. I was um, sweet. I was, I was sort of preoccupied in Austin. 
mm -hmm. um, with what I was doing. But these cars, they were sort of parked off to the side. It was, it was. So I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time with them. But it was really neat to see them in that state because they were basically pulled from where mm -hmm. they had been and placed in this garage until they can be sold. And, and um, so seeing them in as found condition with the layers of dust on them and um, it, it's neat to see cars like that. Um, and sometimes they, you know, I've seen them, I've seen cars like that at auction. Um, and just to, cause even all that dirt is, is history. Yeah. Um, sort of a, from an, an archeological sense. I, I don't, I don't, um, it'll be interesting to see what the buyer does with them, if he, he or she wants to preserve them that way or clean right. them and, up and, and dirt and drive and them. And that's, and that's the thing is, is when you purchase that vehicle, what, how much of the dust are you, I'll say, are you buying or, or <laughs> yeah. trying to retain, yeah. right? I mean, how much value is there in the dirt? I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. Uh, but I tell you, there is no cooler feeling than walking into a, a building and finding a mess of cars in it, or one for that matter, um, under two inches of dust. Under two inches of dust <laughs> and potentially rat poo. Yeah, because um, we ran into that actually in, in Kansas one time, and it's just a, you know a pole barn in the middle of nowhere. You could not see it from any angle, and uh, it was full of cars. Oh jeez! It was and it was the coolest. It was the coolest. That's awesome. Well, one thing that I was kind of surprised, and maybe it's just because. Five years ago, I would have thought the exact opposite, but we did a Facebook post basically with these cars asking, which is cooler, uh, preserved as they are mm -hmm. or shiny and new restored? And it was very heavily, don't restore them. Get them to run and drive them. And I that's, agree with that. that's it. And I say that I'm surprised because five, ten years ago would have been the exact opposite. Exactly. We this were, is the perfect spot for restoration this stuff. Right. Yeah. This is yeah. a great starting point. We got all the parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, and so it's it's kind of encouraging to see that, you know, we're we're really grabbing onto that historical part of it and that right. Yeah, so I mean leaving them. Get them mechanically sound, mm -hmm. new tires, mm -hmm. treat the leather, I guess, and Exactly. Yeah. Main, yeah. Maintenance. Yeah. And that's it. Not not restoration. So well, excellent. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining me. I know you're not in uh, town very often, Stefan, so that I'm was not. great to see your face. And, David? <laughs> it was nice seeing you <laughs> as well, man. It's good <laughs> to see you. So Again. <laughs> right. Until next time, we'll uh, <clears throat> see you soon. Thanks a lot.